Hey everyone, welcome back to Code with Row. Today I'm going to show you how to create destructible geometry in Unreal Engine 5 using the Chaos System. This will be a step-by-step -step guide, so even if you're new to Unreal Engine 5, you can follow along and create some amazing destruction effects. So let's go ahead and get started. So first I've opened up a project with a blank map. And now that we've created our level, I'm just going to go ahead and add a static mesh to the level. And for this example, I am using this content examples pack, which I don't really recommend you do only because it is um, a 10 gigabyte file, but it comes with this really cool Unreal Engine looking cube called the primitive box, just like that. So now that I've dragged my primitive box into my, into my map, you can just use a regular cube by clicking on this quickly add to the project and just looking for a cube and just clicking on it to add this to your project. So I'll leave this right here. And next we'll click the mode dropdown and select fracture. So over here on the top left, you'll see the selection mode and there's an option to click fracture or alternatively, you can click shift six to use the shortcut to go into fracture mode. And to generate the section, make sure we select that static mesh that we're gonna be using and hit new on the top left where it says generate. And now we can save this wherever. So I'm just gonna save this directly into my content folder and just call this GC for a geometry collection. SM chaos prime primitive box. And I'll hit create geometry collection to save this collection. And now I'm going to hold control shift save to save all. And if any issues arise, I'll just click retry and it's saved for me. And now you'll notice that the static mesh is replaced with the geometry collection in the level. So in the fracture hierarchy window up here on the top, right? You'll see that the geometry collection has a single node, meaning it's currently one solid piece. So we only have this index of zero because it's just one solid piece. And now let's fracture the geometry collection. So in the fracture section, click uniform fracture. So in the fracture section, you'll see uniform cluster radial brick. And this is essentially how you want your building or object to break apart. So we're going to do uniform just because this is going to look a bit more, um, I guess like a realistic pattern. So I'll click on that. And now the geometry collection is now fractured. So I'm just going to leave the default settings as they appear over here and click fracture on the bottom. But let's go ahead and just go over some of these. It's gonna give you some min and max. So how many pieces you want, for example, uh, if you want the material to be automatic, or if you wanna select how the inside of this looks, uh, different seeds, just so they're a bit more randomized and so on. But I'm gonna leave these as default and hit fracture. And now on the right, you'll see a bunch of nodes are created, specifically 20 nodes, because our min and max fractures that we set over here are still 20. So you can see the current fracture hierarchy by going to the level statistics down here. And in this example, level zero has one piece and level one has 20 pieces. If you continue to further fracture the geometry collection, the new structure will be reflected in this window. So basically our fractures can have fractures as well, which just means that if you break a building in half, let's say you can break each part into fourths and then each part into eighths if you wanted to set it like that. So basically stepping on pieces can make smaller pieces and you can make it pretty realistic, but it would get pretty performance heavy depending on how many times you layer that down. So you can also preview the how the geometry collection will fracture by changing the value by changing the value of the explode amount inside the fracture window. So under the view settings, so in the fracture window, I'm going to look for a view settings. So under view settings, you're going to see the explode amount and we can move this to see how it would explode and how it would look like when it actually fractures and explode. So I'm going to hit G just to hide some of the UI tools. So you'll see the base square mesh is still there and we can kind of hover around and move around to see how it looks when the object is exploded or fractured. So at one, it'll be like this and you can kind of see all the cubes coming apart and this would be a total of 20 pieces. So now if we wanted to simulate this, we can actually just go over to the play mode and hit simulate. We can go to the play mode options button and select simulate or selected viewport to see the results. So I'm going to go over to selection and I'm going to move this cube upwards like so. And now when I click simulate, you're going to see it fall and break apart. And it didn't really break that much. And that's probably just because it wasn't that high. So I'll hit stop and I'm going to place it a lot higher. And now I'll hit simulate and bam, broken to quite a few pieces. And I also want to test this using the FPS template. So I'm just going to click add over here and I'm going to, and I'm going to click add feature or content pack. And I'm just going to select the first person game mode and hit add to project. And what I'm going to do for the map is just head over to world settings. And if you don't see it, you can click window and make sure world settings is checked. And I'm going to change this to BP first person game mode over here. 
open down the selected game mode and you should see all your objects here. But don't forget to drag the BP rifle into the level because our character needs something to pick up. So I'm going to double click BP first person projectile over here. So this is this yellow circle, which our gun will shoot. And I'm just going to go over to the event graph by hitting event graph up here and select all the nodes except for event hit and delete them just like that. And now we're going to drag out from the event hit node and search for a spawn actor from class. And we're going to click this drop down of class and search for FS underscore master field. Now we're going to drag the spawn transform pin down here and select make transform just like that. And now for the hit location, we want to drag this into the location pin. And we're also going to drag a return value from the spawn actor and search for set activation type. And now we're going to connect the execution pin to the set and change activation type to trigger. And we're also going to drag the return value pin again and search for CE trigger, just like that. And now I'm just going to connect the set to the trigger and I'm going to drag the CE trigger node and search for a delay. And then after the delay, I want to click destroy actor. So your compiled blueprint should look something like this. So I'll hit compile and save. And now I'm going to go back to the fracture mode and I'll select shift B so that we can see the bones. So we can see the bone color of the geometry collection. So when I click my static mesh and click shift B, you'll see these bone colors. Now we'll go back to selection, click play mode, and we'll pick up that gun and shoot the box. So now when I shoot the box, you're going to see all these pieces blow up just like that. And I can also go back to my fracture mode, hold shift and click B to just set it to that default looking skin. Go back to my selection play mode and just reskin it so I don't have to see all the colors. And then when I break it, you'll see the actual mesh of the object just break apart and the inside looks perfectly material. So it kind of looks like uh, some errors, but it kind of does look like that the inside of the object is how you would anticipate it to look. And now you know how to create a fracture geometry in Geometry Collection. You can take what you've learned and apply it to more complex examples. And that's it for today's tutorial on destructible geometry in Unreal Engine 5. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Code with Row for more awesome tutorials. Don't forget to check out our Discord and Patreon links in the description below for exclusive content and project files. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Until next time.